Okay. Okay. First things first, this is not an ad or a sponsored video. When I did that giveaway a while back last month or June or something like that, I asked everybody what whistles they were playing. And so many of you said that you either play these or you want to play these that I bought one. And I figured I better get on board. I better figure out what everybody else is talking about or why everybody seems to think these are so great. After the euro to dollar conversion, it was about 86 bucks, which depending on what you're comparing to is certainly in the high end of whistles. But all in all, I would say a pretty fair price for a professional instrument, which, spoiler alert, that's what this is. First impressions, I would say this thing is very well built. It feels like a professional instrument. It feels like it was made with some care and it's using quality materials. This tubing is very solid. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not particularly worried about squishing it like I have with some other much, much cheaper whistles. The mouthpiece looks like a pretty complicated bit of engineering. It's got one, two, three layers as far as I can tell. You've got this black, which I'm assuming is Delrin, this kind of metal insert, and then another bit of black Delrin, and it's kind of held together by this little pin here. It looks professional, and it fits together extremely well, despite the fact that it is multiple layers. When you hold it, it just feels like one solid piece, which, again, tells me it was you know, very well made, which I like to see, especially for something that's going to cost you about $100. So I'll blast away on a tune with this, just so you can get an idea of what it sounds like. Every note just feels very responsive, which is a great thing to see. And, and again, not that I'm surprised by that for the cost of it. I'm always pleasantly surprised whenever I get a whistle that just kind of fills me with confidence. Uh, I'm not worried too much about, am I gonna break these notes? Is it gonna jump the octave properly? Is it gonna squeak a bit? No, and with this, you just don't really worry about that. Like I've always mentioned with the Gary Humphrey whistles, that's kind of where you get into the value of spending a bit of money on a high quality instrument. Because right away, if something goes wrong, you're probably going to be able to assume that it's the player and not the instrument that's making the issue. Not always. You know, these things can get clogged just like anything else. But it's going to eliminate a lot of those question marks that you might get with something that only costs you about 10 bucks, and that's mass produced. Okay, I want to talk about balance. Because that's the only negative that I've found in the short time that I've had this thing. It feels very top heavy. No, it doesn't feel very top heavy. It is top heavy, especially when you're comparing it to anything that you may be used to, like say a Generation or a Sweet Tone. I typically play whistles that are balanced right on that B top hole. Usually a whistle is gonna be balanced right about here. So it feels, it feels off balance. That's not a huge problem. If, you, if you're getting one of these, you're probably just gonna get used to it and that's fine. It's the same complaint that I have about scent whistles and those things are phenomenal. In fact, the style of this is remarkably similar. I don't know who came first, I assume scent made his design first. It's not exactly the same because again there's this pin here but it's a similar issue and it's it's definitely top heavy. Whether that's a problem for you or not really that's just a matter of playing it and, and probably deciding for yourself. Now the other side of that balance coin is a good thing. The lower octave and the higher octave volume wise are very close. Typically when you're playing a whistle especially a cheap one there's a very substantial difference between a low D and the second D and obviously between the third D, which is gonna be true of all of them. But in this case, when you jump that octave, you don't get a noticeable jump in volume. You don't hear that very shrill, ear bleeding volume that you get out of some whistles, which again, balance wise, that's a great thing. And especially if you're going into a studio, that's something that can be very useful because the engineer is not gonna have to do a whole ton of compression to, to balance out your lower notes with the higher notes. As always, I gotta compare everything to my Humphrey because that to me is my gold standard instrument and I've been playing it for so long, obviously I'm very used to it. I'm gonna play the same tune just so you can hear it, you can get an idea.
What do you think? What I think is that they're extremely close. They're both, again, professional instruments. Honestly, in this case, really just comes down to that balance thing because I'm used to it. But if this is number one, this is 1A. This is extremely close. And I don't think you're gonna go wrong with either one of them. When I first bought this, I had intentions of doing this video and then doing a giveaway, but I like it so much that I think I'm gonna hang on to it for a while. Sorry about that, y'all. Maybe one of these days I'll give it away. But if this is a backup instrument for me, then I'm gonna consider myself pretty lucky that I have a very good backup. And I may end up doing some recording with it because I do really appreciate that balance of volume between the, the lower octave and the top octave. Now, from a comparison standpoint, Hopefully you can kind of see they're very, very close. The Killarney is about you know, a few millimeters longer and that may just be because of a tuning issue. I didn't actually compare the tuning because I checked it before and it's in tune. And again, with a professional instrument, that's one less thing you're gonna usually have to worry about. Otherwise they're gonna be very similar and just comparing the finger hole spacing, also very, very close. I can see just a couple of millimeters difference if I'm looking down where the bottom hole lines up and the finger spacing is a bit longer on the Killarney. But again, we're just talking about millimeters, which to me, when I pick it up, I don't really even notice the difference. Some whistles you can play and you think it's very cramped or it's very spaced out. It really feels basically the same as the, as the Humphrey, with the exception of that, that top heaviness. So again, just for comparison, you can kind of see where this thing lines up right about there. Whereas on the Killarney, it's about an inch or so up higher. Significant, noticeable, certainly not a deal breaker. So which do you like? Which sounds better to you? Admittedly, we're, we're not talking about a very scientific test because we're coming over YouTube and everything gets a little bit compressed and all that. What do you like about it? Those of you who play these, those of you who play Humphreys, what do you like better? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments. And that's it for this one, guys. I will see you all in the next one. Uh, we're getting very, very close to the Great Whistle Smackdown. That'll be the next comparison video I do, so stick around for that. And I'll see you all then. Cheers, guys.